Welcome to another episode of The Glint Standard. So today it's going to be myself, Miriam. I introduced myself. And then Lindsay. Hi. Yay. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, advertising tactics and planning for all of those holiday ads and promotions um, that usually go on around this time of the season. Want to jump right in? Yeah, let's jump right in. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so a few things I think we wanted to really talk about. Uh, consumer behavior was one of them. For we sure. wanted to talk about um, tactics that are commonly used during the holiday season and then how um, even like you're not going to be super late into the game if you just start now advertising. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think obviously like the big box office companies and these large corporations are planning, but doesn't necessarily mean that some of the smaller organizations have really started yeah. or they're like oh shoot it's too late we missed it mm -hmm. and they don't really know what to do yeah um yeah. so i think a couple of things that stood out to me were um consumer behavior for 2023 yeah i know that you had mentioned a tiktok video you'd seen recently yes yes so the tiktok video was definitely talking about people spending like overtly spending right um really just anything that makes them happy or anything that they think is going to make their loved ones happy and really not second guessing spending a little extra yeah this yeah. holiday season and i think just in general well and it's very interesting because something i had recently read was that um, a lot of consumers this holiday season are doing something different and they're spreading their spending out over the course of multiple months mm -hmm. versus just buying november end of november and through december we're talking they like even myself started buying in october wow and they're yeah and they they're buying through january mm -hmm. february just to spread out some of the spending mm -hmm. um but some of the other really interesting statistics i ran across which i think you'll find fascinating are the fact that um we're going to see the highest christmas spend rate or holiday spend rate that we've ever seen yeah um, it's going to be up three to four percent from last year. So I think the top number they're predicting is $966 billion Jeez. spent on the holidays this year. Yeah. Um, and a good chunk of that is not just credit card spending, but at least, um, I think they said $166 billion is what they're estimating to be spent through smartphones. That's crazy. Which like speaks to the necessity of digital advertising. Oh, for sure. Right? For sure. And social media marketing. Which, yes. For those that don't know, Miriam's a social media marketing expert. I'm the digital marketing person, you know, digital yeah. ad person. And so it's kind of like how we, the two worlds collide a little yeah, bit. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, that, that speaks volumes to um, touching back on what you said, planning, right? So a lot of the times, you know, we work with credit unions, financial institutions, a lot of their products and services are cyclical. Yeah. And yes. so, you know, you're re you're just rebranding a product that you already have. How can we make that promotion different and planning ahead of time, right? Yeah. Because again, if people are, are spending starting in October, then you want to make sure you meet some of those people at that time, right? Um, might be a, a credit card, might yeah. be a loan promotion, might be um, some kind of special that you have going on, even if not outside of the financial space, right? If you have a special product or service, um, we have a brewery who's doing a gift basket, right? Yeah. So even that, they're they're now planning, and it's you know almost like a last minute or an extra something special for somebody. Yeah. It's never too early, and I feel like it's never too late, yeah. right? And I feel like it's also important to note because one of the common um, organizations that we work with are nonprofits, mm -hmm. and one of the best gifts you can give someone is a donation to a nonprofit in their name. And so I kind of want to like throw that in there a little bit that for my nonprofit friends out there that yeah. do listen to this podcast and they work with us or they listen to it because of the nonprofit advice we give them it's actually not too late to encourage those yeah. end of your donations mm -hmm. because you do want to reach that tax deductible yep. you know that limit but then additionally you know it's rather than just something that someone's getting in a stocking or exchanging gift cards you're doing something that impacts a far greater cause yeah and so donating in a family member's name or something that's that Mm -hmm. you know means something to them I think can be a really really good Christmas gift yeah oh yeah and definitely thinking about partnering right I yeah. think that's a big thing because throughout the year you're you're partnering with other community um, organizations businesses um, so it's always a good time again I think it, it, this is a little more in the early stages of planning mm -hmm. but reaching out 
to those partnerships that you already have and figuring out how you can maybe bundle a donation with yes. a product or service that's being sold, right? Oh, that's such and, a good point. Right? Because again, you know, it's, it, it is the giving season. It is the holidays. People are more inclined to to donate and to give mm -hmm. and to go maybe that above and beyond little step than they, they would any other time of the year. And it's the perfect time to find those partnerships and really reinforce those relationships that you've already established throughout the year. Well, and I think really what you're getting at too is looking at causes that give back more than just money. Mm -hmm. But like um, there's an organization that we work with that um, a big chunk of their employee base are disabled adults. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. that's the nonprofit aspect of what they do. And everything else they do as a business mm -hmm. goes into providing jobs for disabled adults. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. by working with them, whether it's donating to them mm -hmm. or using their services, yeah. you're automatically giving back. And so I think it's really about finding those organizations that you can look at that and say, this would be a really cool gift because of. Yeah. Um, you realize that that giving back goes much further. A lot deeper. Than, yeah, a lot deeper than just, here's 20 bucks. You oh, know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's making a, a difference somewhere for else sure. and, and impacting yeah. more, for sure. But, you know, outside of just the partnerships and, and the planning, right, um, as a business, you want to make sure that whatever promotion you're putting out there, yeah. you're getting... A return on it right For sure um, and so I think digital and you can speak a, <laughs> a lot more into this but definitely you know any any social or digital ads that you put out there right what is yeah. what do you what do you recommend or what do you see as maybe um, you know lead generating brand awareness um, sales conversions as like what what are some of the top kind of ways of to really measure at the end of, yeah. of the season like how well did we do so I think that there's there's a couple of things that lead into this. Mm -hmm. First of all, I think it's really important. I don't know that we really verbalize it, the importance of planning yeah. ahead of time. Like planning your content, mm -hmm. planning to make sure that you know what you're doing and why you're doing yep. it. Even if it's a last minute decision, the planning that goes into, okay, if we're gonna do a special for, um, you know, whatever our product is, this is what the discount is going to be before you go in and start creating that content. Oh yeah. Right, so the planning portion is such a big thing. Um, but I think that when we're talking about how to measure return on investment, ROI for my friends who, who <laughs> have heard that term also, um, when you're measuring return on investment, ROI, there are a couple of um, different key points that we, we look for. So. If you're talking lead form generation, mm -hmm. um, really what you're looking for is getting leads from people that have purchased from you in the past or in the current season so that you can market to them moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not just a common and a popular way to start garnering leads, but it is a really good way to do remarketing. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that means is, is, is it's actually cheaper to maintain your current customer base than it is to try and go get new oh, ones. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right, so if you can remarket to them, you don't have to worry about trying to sell them again. They already liked your product, they already used your product, they already purchased it. So get them to buy again, um, it's that. So lead generation helps you remarket. Remarket or retarget those mm -hmm. same people. Um, Another really common one is is very simply um, clicks. Like, are they are they clicking the button mm -hmm. that says yes, I want to put that in my shopping cart, and then are they following through on that? Yeah. Right. How do you find um, whether or not your return the the money that you spent on social media mm -hmm. on digital advertising actually resulted in money spent? Well. That is just all part of the programming on the back end, and there are easy ways for us to be able to track those things now. I would say that that's developed and grown over the last 15 years. Oh, yeah, for like, sure. I mean, I remember 15 years ago working <laughs> at a university, and they're like, how do we know if it did anything? And it's like, tr ROI is really hard right yeah. now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's significantly yeah. more difficult. But now it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a really, really simple way or simple solution for us to be able to say, okay, that person actually added this item to a shopping cart and then took a final action yeah. um, and purchased. And so having that, that trail or that path to figure out who actually followed through on the purchase is a big one. Yeah. So, you know, there. I think there are a lot of those different things that, that play into those those key numbers that we look for. Mm -hmm. Oh, I but agree. But I, I think that lead gen and um, just the click-through action 
are probably the two most common. Oh yeah, I definitely agree. And I think playing more into the planning part that we keep referring to, right? Because that's, I mean, when you talk about anything in terms of promotions, the planning is important no matter how much time you have prior, how, how short that time is. But again, you know, as Lindsay mentioned, she's um, over our digital ads and I'm over social, but those overlap, right? Yes, right and so. ensuring that the messaging stays consistent. And that's even outside of just whatever we do digitally. So whatever is being said in, mm-hmm. in an ad, it's, it needs to be reset in the social. And then again, if there's any print material, that, that all stays consistent, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to have misleading or, um, you know, flyers and then posters and things that just don't align with everything that you have across all your channels, right? Not saying that they all have to look identical, but you want to make sure that they are at least within (laughs) the same realm and people know that they're referring to the same ad or the same promo when they see it. Well, and okay, so I have a question I want to ask because I think this is very much more your area even than it is mine. Yeah. If you were to give tips on the best way to plan um, for a season like this, like what yeah. would be your top three, um, planning tips when it comes to planning social media content? Cause that is your area <laughs> yeah, way more than sure. it is mine. So <laughs> what do you think are the best things that people should do when planning? Yeah. I mean, okay. So kind of going back to my credit union days, um, and a little bit further than just the social media, I think above anything, number one is know your budget. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Right. That's because, a really good one. um, not only are you having to budget, for your digital ads and then in case you want to boost any social but you also have to budget for anything else right so if you're talking about maybe getting shirts for staff Mm -hmm. as a promote like also having them promote um if you're talking about having to do any print material that's additionally something right or if you're working with somebody or you decide to hire an agency (laughs) you know shameless plug (laughs) this happens every time i'm on this podcast (laughs) um but in case you decide to hire an agency, that also has to be included into, into your budget. So I think above anything else is knowing how much you're going to yeah. be able to spend. Um, and especially coming towards the end of the year, a lot of people have either exhausted mm-hmm. or have very little budget left. That. You have to plan ahead of time. You have to plan, right? And I'm not saying you have to know exactly what your promotion is going to be, but knowing that you have a promotion in those last three months or that last yeah. quarter of the year... Yeah. And knowing, okay, I need to have that budget there right. ready is always really good. I think that's number one because then again, knowing your budget, so much easier to calculate how yes. much ROI. Yep. Right? Sure. I, I think that's number one. And then and second is anybody that is going to be involved in helping you promote hmm. whatever you have going on needs to be well versed in what it is yes right so again going back to my credit union days you want to make sure your frontline staff is fully aware yeah. right <laughs> what your marketing team is planning and what when it's coming out how long that promotion is going to last um all of the details about it right um and even if they don't d- know it right off the top of their heads a little cheat sheet anything you know and this again if you have salespeople on the floor if you have anybody out there just talking about what you're going to be doing make sure that they have the information that they need at hand yeah especially the deals and specials that are happening too oh yeah oh yeah yeah Yeah. especially if like they're like very specific to the holiday season and you just for and then limited time right because then you don't want to tell somebody oh we have this deal and then they come in in january and they're like hey i heard about this (laughs) and it's like oh yeah yeah and i think third um keep it fun Oh, yeah. Right? In terms of planning, yeah. Right? I mean, in social media, you're planning it. Don't repeat yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just post your ad over and over again yeah. thinking that because somebody just keeps seeing it yeah. that that they're, that they're going to eventually click on it because that's mm-hmm. not going to be the case, right? So use the same points, like whatever the deal is, whatever those specials are, but like tweak it a little bit, right? Change it a little bit. Give it a little bit of a different angle. For sure. Um, not every single time is it going to be just like, there it is. And then the next week, the exact same post, yeah. right? Because what's going to happen is people become numb to it. Yeah, and they become bored. They keep, Yeah, they yeah. become bored, right? And then, of course, low engagement. Your stuff stops 
showing up. Well, and a lot of it has to do with noise fatigue. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Because, like, once we get to a point where we as humans are doom scrolling Facebook or TikTok <laughs> or any of those platforms, yeah. like, it gets to a point where you're like, I don't actually care about the noise. I want something interesting. And so yeah. you fully, you're like, I've already seen it. You just keep going. Yeah. Right. So it is important to spice that up. Yeah, for sure. So I think that for me would be kind of going back and more than just the social, but yeah. definitely you know, incorporating at the end and making sure that it's different. But I think for me, that's what it would be, making sure you know your, yeah. you know your budget, um, all of your people involved are informed, and that you keep your social media at, um, posts, not so much your ads, because those yeah. stay the same, but your posts, um, a little different, right? And a little tweak, same, mes- yeah. same message, just maybe a little different. Yeah, and I will say with the, so with the digital advertising, um, it is important to change them up, mm-hmm. um, especially during the holiday season. Something that should be noted: the ads as they are run, but yeah. have varying forms of those same ads mm-hmm. that share a similar look, feel, yep. um, tone, voice, all of the things. But having variance there mm-hmm. will inevitably attract that you know the viewer's eye, yeah. um, and you want them because it on average it takes someone um, encountering a brand at least three times before they make an actual buying decision. Mm-hmm. And so when we're talking about holiday spending and where people put their money, yeah, it's really really important that that someone is taking the time to look at your ad once, twice, three times so they can actually make yep. that action. Yeah, and even you know speaking a little more on that, um, even with social media, right? Just because I post something today doesn't mean that you're going to see it today. Yeah. Right? Right. And so especially when you're thinking about, you know, the really short turnaround planning, Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you might want to consider boosting some of those Mm -hmm. and maybe adding a little money behind them. So they're shown in front of, you know, they're in front of people a little quicker than just the organic reach. For sure. Right? So I think that's another thing to kind of consider there. But, you know, planning, I think, is number one. We've we've kind of just figured that and got to the point of that but I think we'll leave them with one last thing and I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit okay so what of any ad for the holiday season is one of your most memorable like that when you see it every year you're or even not every year but like that you see it and you're just like oh yeah that brand did it again um Okay, I, I always go back to Coca-Cola. Oh my gosh, why was that the one I was going to say? But like, Coca-Cola <laughs> has defined Santa Claus. And yes. Coca-Cola has defined the, really what I would say is the magic of Christmas. Oh, yep. The holiday yeah. feeling. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's this feeling of like the, the homegrown, uh, the hometown, snow-covered, like Christmas shopping and yeah. visiting Santa Claus and Santa Claus is holding the Coke. And yeah. so there, there is that warmth that goes into it. And if Coca-Cola doesn't do it, I'm devastated. I know, right? See, and for me, it's Coca-Cola, but the polar bears. Mm, like, I get it. Like feeling kind of like that family love yeah. and how like anytime you guys come together, because I know for my household, anytime we come together for a party, yeah. there's always Coca-Cola. Always. You know what I mean? Yep. But... I mean, do you have anything else? Um, <laughs> let me, I'm checking my list. Um, check it twice. Check it twice. <laughs> okay, I don't, no, I think we've covered all yeah. of it. Like we've, we've really hit on how to plan. What are some of the things that you should focus on when mm-hmm. we're talking about like metrics to, to review at the end of the year? Yeah. Um, I, I, that's, we've hit a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, if anything, if you get anything, plan. 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 Even if it's short, long term, doesn't matter. You need to have a plan. And it's not too late. It's it, yeah. even if you feel like you haven't done something yet and you should have before the end of the year, it's not too late because people are still spending money. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, like you said, it, it even goes past the Christmas actual day, yeah, right? Exactly. Some people don't see their friends till after and so you yep. don't know. Like do an extend a special or whatever it may be. But yeah, definitely never too late. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of The Glint Standard. You can see more episodes here or click the logo below to follow our channel and please hit the thumbs up if you like this episode.